Did you know, Harriet, that there are over 320,000 men in the National Guard today? No, I didn't. And did you know that every member of the Guard reports for training with his unit at least once a week and receives pay for it? No, I didn't. And that they now have an aviation branch called the Air National Guard? Did you know that dinner is ready and it's time to go to work with our 1847 Rogers Brothers silver plate? No, I didn't. And that America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers? That I did. <laughs> America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of 1847 Rogers Brothers Silver Plate, presents The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. Hey, there's excitement in the air. A mysterious change has taken place in the vicinity of 1847 Rogers Road. Remember the friendly old elm tree in front of the house? Well, it doesn't look friendly anymore. The full moon shining through it, and on one of the bare branches is a big black owl. And the old dependable weather vane on top of the garage. Gee, it looks different now. I'm not sure if it's a weather vane or not, the way the shadows fall. Could be a witch on a broomstick. Oh, it's spooky out tonight. In the Nelson kitchen, there's an atmosphere of feverish activity and excited preparations. What are you looking for, David? We're trying to find some paper bags, big ones. Well, look in the bottom drawer there. There, that's a good one, Ricky. Yeah, but what do I do with the potatoes? No, not that drawer, Ricky, on the other side. Hey, what's going on out here? We're getting some paper bags. Sounds like you were taking the kitchen apart. Come on, we, boy. We're going to have fun tonight, Pop. Yeah, it looks plenty spooky out to me. What do you have there, dear? Oh, I was just rummaging around upstairs a bit, and I thought the boys might make a costume out of these old work pants. Gee, Pop, they're pretty dirty. Not only that, dear, they're covered with paint. Well, what do you expect, Harriet? I wore them when I painted the breakfast nook. I think you did a better job on the pants than you did on the breakfast nook. <laughs> How about you, Ricky? Would you like to be a painter? Will you get your white cap and stick a couple of brushes in your belt? Golly, Pop. Those pants are pretty big. Oh, I don't know. Let's see how they look on you. Here, step into them. Put your foot in there. Yeah. Now the other foot. Yeah, now pull them up. Mm. Oh, that's a wonderful costume. The headless painter. <laughs> Anyhow, Pop, we don't need costumes. We got masks. That's enough. Well, you suit yourself. We used to wear costumes when I was a kid. That's just for little kids, Pop. Me and David are going trick or treat. Trick or treat? Sure. We ring a guy's doorbell and say trick or treat. If he doesn't give us cookies or something, we let him have it. <laughs> there you are, dear. That's Halloween, 1948. Sounds more like Chicago, 1925. <laughs> It's a lot of fun, Pop. Didn't you used to do that when you were a kid? No, David. As I recall, we used to go in more for the real spirit of Halloween. You know, the spooky, scary stuff. What do you mean, Pop? Well, I, I mean, we'd find some old haunted house and go prowling around looking for ghosts and stuff. You sure were brave, Pop. Oh, well, not necessarily, David. Pop, did you ever see a ghost? Oh, I won't say I saw a ghost, but I will say I saw something. A spook? I don't know. It was white and shimmering, indistinct, and wavered back and forth. Sometimes it was there, sometimes it wasn't there. White and shimmering. Did they have television sets then, Pop? <laughs> no, Ricky, this was right out in the center of the living room. I'm afraid Halloween's different nowadays. All the wonderful, spooky, hobgoblin atmosphere... That's all changed now. Can't help feeling a little sad when you see the joys of your childhood disappearing in a changing world. Halloween just isn't exciting anymore. Are you going to cry, Pop? <laughs> no, she is. 
Uh, just the memories coming back. You sure must have had fun, Pop. Do you think there's really such a thing as a ghost? A real ghost, I mean? No, well, I don't know. In a spooky old house with the moon shining through the broken shutters, you imagine you see some pretty strange things. I'd sure like to see a ghost. Boy, would I run! Well, there's the old McAdams house up on the hill. That's a pretty spooky-looking place. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there were a ghost or two lurking around in there. Do you think we could see one if we went up there, Pop? It's very possible. Oh, Ozzie. David, your father's just kidding. Oh, let the boys have a little fun, Harriet. After all, it's Halloween. Come on, grab the bags, Ricky. We gotta get going. Hey, wait for me. Don't you think a lot of the spirit of Halloween has been lost? Oh, I don't know, dear. The kids seem to have a good time. That's the important thing. Oh, they pretend to enjoy it. But where's the fun? Trick or treat. Where's the adventure? What danger is there in getting a handful of cookies from Mrs. Dunkel? You've never eaten Mrs. Dunkel's cookies. <laughs> have we had any callers yet? Oh, about a dozen of them. You should have seen little Julie Thornberry. She was all dressed up in one of Catherine's old dresses, and she had a stocking on her head. Really? Oh, I'm sorry I missed it. And little Georgie Dunkel. He had the cutest clown suit with skeletons sewed on it. We sure have some cute little kids in this neighborhood. I'll get it. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get it. I want to have some fun, too. Yes? Trick or treat. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. Aren't you a little big to be playing trick or treat? (laughs) Trick or treat. (laughs) How old are you? (laughs) Fifty-three. Ever heard of a grown man playing trick or treat? Well, my little boy's over on the next block. I'm just helping him out. You don't even have a costume. What do you think I am, a child? (laughs) Come on, trick or treat. It's a little unusual. What happens if I don't give you a treat? Well, I sneak back later and ring your doorbell. So what? (laughs) And when you answer it, I punch you in the nose. Come on, trick or treat. <laughs> really funny. Uh, here are some cookies. Only three? Well, they've got to go around. There are other children, too, you know. Okay. Oh, they're chocolates. My kid likes chocolate cookies. Thanks. Well, that's all right. The, uh, how old is your little boy? Twenty-five. <laughs> One of the kids in the neighborhood, one of the older kids. I say, would you do me a favor if you're not too busy? Yeah, what is it? Would you stop down at the store and get some candies or something? The rate we're going, we're going to run out of stuff. Okay. Uh, hey, what are you doing? Just putting a couple of cookies in your pocket in case you got stopped for trick or treat. Some of the boys get pretty rough. Oh, Harriet, please. You don't think I'm afraid of a bunch of kids? Well, suit yourself. Last Halloween, Joe Randolph bumped into the backfield of the high school football team and came home minus his trousers. No kidding. I understand they have a a pretty good team this year. Why don't you just take these four cookies, just in case? You better give me two more. The ends might be with them. Don't tell my friends, so the cookies are in my pocket. They're very nice cookies. Wonderful cookies. What's this about cookies? Oh, it's you, Thorny. What a cook what a corny trick, hiding behind the head. Oh, just keeping in the spirit of Halloween. You should see what I did to Duncan a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> did you scare him? What did you do? I sneaked up on his front porch, yeah. rang the doorbell, and ran like the dickens. He didn't know what to think. <laughs> then when he went in the house, I went around to the back and started rattling the back door. <laughs> oh, why was he scared? <laughs> what else did you do, Thorny? Well, I waited a few minutes, and I tapped on the window and moaned like this. <laughs> and I, I rattled the door again, and I moaned some more. Then I began pounding on the side of the house. Yeah. And then what? <laughs> then the police came. <laughs> that uncle just has no sense of humor. Did the police do anything to you? No, just told me to stop annoying people. They took my soap away, too. <laughs> You're just a big kid at heart, aren't you, Thorny? Well, it's all in fun, huh? What's Halloween nowadays? Nothing happens. My boy Will's out playing trick or treat. Uh, David and Ricky, too. 
Somehow Halloween sort of lost the old kick. Yeah, it sure isn't like it was when we were kids. You know, there was an old haunted house in our town, and every Halloween us kids used to go prowling through it. Really spooky. Sure, that's the real spirit of Halloween. Now, you take the old McAdams place up on Franklin Avenue. There's a perfect haunted house. There's some way to, to sneak in there. You mean you go in there at night? Oh, sure. Why not? Oh, no reason. I just never cared for the looks of the place myself. Those grotesque chimneys, staring windows... Sort of gives me the creeps. Barney, you're kidding. No, I'm not, Oz. There's something frightening about it. Especially at night. What an imagination. Well, I've got to get down to the drugstore. I promised Harry I'd get some candy and stuff. Okay, Oz. See I'll you later. Say, yeah. say uh, when you go by the McAdams place, don't let the ghosts get you. Well, that's right. I, I go right by there, don't I? Yes, sir. <laughs> not afraid, I, Oz. <laughs> Barney, cut it out. If you walk down the store with me, I'll buy you soda. Hey, Mom, Pop, we went over to the McAdams place and we saw a ghost. A real ghost? A ghost, a real ugly one, with sharp teeth and a long nose and pointed ears and hair all over his face. And first we thought it was Pop. <laughs> That's the nicest thing anybody's ever said about me. You trying to scare us. Oh, boys, don't be silly. You guys probably saw the moon shining through the window, and your imagination did the rest. Okay, go up and see for yourself. Yeah, why don't you, Pop? Yeah, why don't you, Pop? Well, I'd be glad to, except I promised to take your mother to the movies. Since when? <laughs> well, that is, I, I've been thinking about it all day. There's a wonderful triple Halloween show at the Bijou. The son of Frankenstein, Dracula's daughter, and a date with Judy. <laughs> counting on the movies, dear. In fact, I'd much rather you'd go up and give us a report on the ghost. Oh, it's so silly. Go ahead, Pop. Have some fun. Go ahead, oh. dear. Well, okay. If it makes you happy, I'll go up and visit the haunted house. Out of Daddy. I thought for a minute there you were getting scared, Pop. Oh, David. Oh, just remember this, boys. There's not a cowardly bone in your father's body. Of course, every now and then the meat around them gets a little jumpy. <laughs> <laughs> what am I laughing at? You hear it over the back fence? You hear it on the bus? They talk about it at bridge clubs and when they meet on Main Street. What is this topic of conversation? Why, just this. The four patterns created by 1847 Rogers Brothers are the loveliest in town. Yep, it's true. The four patterns created by 1847 Rogers Brothers are unexcelled. No other silver plate is designed with such imagination, such feeling for detail. And each of the beautiful 1847 patterns is designed with you in mind, designed to fit your tastes, your scheme of decoration, your dreams. If you like modern, dramatic things, for example, the 1847 pattern for you is eternally yours. Eternally yours is simple and sleek in line, and each piece is crowned with exquisite openwork, even the knives. That's a feature you'll find only in 1847 Rogers Brothers. And in every way, eternally yours is proof that the beautiful silverware, which bears the year mark 1847, is the finest in America. So see it tomorrow. Eternally yours. One of the four love patterns created by the one and only 1847 Rogers Brothers. Warning to all ghosts. Beware, Ozzie Nelson will get you if you don't watch out. Yes, indeed. Ozzie Nelson, arch enemy of all ghosts. Goblins, spirits, and similar supernatural phenomena is on the march. Target for tonight. The ghost that walks in the old McAdams house. See the courageous Ozzie as he strides firmly across the porch of 1847 Rogers Road. Chin up, flashlight swinging at his side. Down the steps, down the walk. And now he stops. Every muscle tense, eyes alert, nose twitching. A white, filmy object moves out of the darkness. Who's there? It's me, Mr. Nelson. Oh, oh, hello, Emmy Lou. I came over to show you my Halloween costume. I'm going to a party. Where are you going, Mr. Nelson? Oh, I'm uh, on an errand for the boys. 
They went up to the old McAdams house tonight, and they think they saw a ghost. Really, Mr. McAdams? Yeah, I'm going up there, you know, to prove to them it was just their imagination. You're going in that spooky old house tonight, alone? Well, of course. Evidently, you haven't heard the story about the McAdams place. Well, I've heard some silly rumor it's supposed to be haunted or something. But it is, Mr. Nelson. I heard the whole story from the people who live next door. The story goes that years ago in Scotland, in the old Haggis Castle, the young and beautiful Lady Jane McAdams had a quarrel with her lover, Douglas McDingle McCampbell McTavish. A Scotchman. Yes. Yes, much. Well, anyway, Lady Jane pushed her lover, Douglas McDingle McTavish, Campbell McTavish, down the stairs. Down, down, down he went. It had banging on each stone step. Thump, thump, crunch, crunch. His bagpipes mournfully playing, the Campbells are coming. <laughs> as he lay at the bottom of the staircase dying, Douglas McDingle McCampbell McTavish, or as they called him, Mac, as, as he lay at the bottom of the staircase, he took an oath. Oh, I'd swear a little myself. <laughs> Jane, wherever she went, his spirit would always haunt her. Where did she go? She came here to the United States and built the old McCaffrey's place. And they say that on nights of a full moon like tonight, the giant ghost of Lord McTavish returns. And while the eerie notes of bagpipes ring in the night air, he prowls the house in search of Lady Jane. (laughs) He's the daughter. Well, it, it makes a good story, but nobody in his right mind would believe it. Well, you believe it, don't you, Mr. Nelson? Yes, but I'm not. I'm uh, uh, of course, it's a lot of nonsense. Okay, Mr. Nelson, but remember, if you go up there tonight and see the ghost and get a terrible fright and drop dead, don't come around saying I didn't warn you. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Back so soon? Uh, no, I, I haven't gone yet. As a matter of fact, I, I've been thinking this over, and I don't think I'll go. The whole idea seems sort of childish. Well, what about the boys, dear? You promised them. I, I, I know, but but I mean, after all, isn't it silly for a full-grown man? Uh, it, it's only a wild go- uh, uh, goose. Uh, it, it, that, that's all it is. Well, if you'd and, like, dear, I'll go with you. And the boys... What did you say? I said I'll go with you. There are times, Harriet, when a man likes to be alone. Oh. Well, all right, dear. Get your coat. This isn't one of those times. Don't get nervous now, dear. Just... Keep cool. Oh, I'm cool, all right. Matter of fact, I'm shivering a little. Just hold my hand good and tight. I can't. Mm-hmm. You're squeezing mine so hard the fingers are asleep. <laughs> Sorry. Is that better? It's better. How do we get through this iron fence? There's a gate here someplace, I think. It'll probably be bolted and spoil all our fun. They usually have a huge lock on these things and thick chains. Now, here we are. Oh. Lock? No. <laughs> well, push it open. Here, will you take the flashlight a second? Thanks. And, and, and the baseball bat, too. <laughs> Doesn't this place look weird? Yes, it is pretty spooky in that. Shall I sing something to keep your nerve up? If you want to, dear. It'll keep you from getting scared. Did you ever think as the hearse goes by (laughs) someday you are going to die? There's a spook in the meadow. Dear, dear, it might frighten the ghost. Must be a haunted house. The door squeaks. I, I don't know why you insisted on coming along, Harriet. I could just as easily have come by myself. Ozzy, something has hold of my coat. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> 
Who closed the door? Didn't you? No. Oh, it must have been the wind. Gee, this place sure looks creepy with the moon streaming through the window. What was that? Now, dear, don't be frightened. I'm right beside you. Ozzy, there's something in this room. It's coming toward us. It's getting closer. Harry, quick, my baseball bat. Hey, I'll careful with that. Do it. Oh. Hello, Harry. You old trickster. Oh, I just thought I'd have a little fun with all the talk that's been going around about this place. So you're the ghost David and Ricky saw. <laughs> I should have guessed by the description. You should have a bagpipe, though, Thorny. A bagpipe? Oh, well, sure. Haven't you heard? This place is supposed to be haunted by a Scotch ghost who plays the bagpipe. And each night he comes down the stairs playing some old... Well, you do have one, Thorny. Where is it? <laughs> oh, you sure play awful. Worse than you think. I don't play at all. <laughs> but I hear a bagpipe. Listen, I can hear it plain as day. Ozzy, up there, the head of the stairs. The ghost. The ghost of Lord McTavish. Well, we've seen it. Let's go. <laughs> well, let's all keep calm about this. We'll, we'll just keep quiet. Oh, it's getting late, Bernie. Let's get out of here. Ozzy, you're carrying my coat. Wait. Oz, the door won't open. I keep turning my hand on it. It won't open. Stop it, Bernie. You've got hold of my nose. This way, boys. Bernie, the door's over here. Follow me. I'll make one of my own. <laughs> No, thanks. I can't understand it. There must be some scientific explanation. Did I seem very scared out there? Oh, no, not especially. I mean, did I act in any way that might give somebody the impression that this illusion we saw uh, frightened me? No, you were very level-headed about it. Of course, it was the first time I've ever seen you jump a seven-foot fence. <laughs> I didn't think I could fool you. That thing, whatever it was, scared the, the daylights out of me. I was plenty scared myself. I can't figure out those bagpipes. No, and then what about the ghost? Oh, oh, well, yes, of course, the ghost, too. Harriet, what are you stuffing behind the sofa pillow? Oh, nothing, dear, just some old papers and things. Wait a minute, let me see that. It's an only an old sheet. You get the couch dirty. It's got cobwebs. Cobwebs! How about a little more coffee? And there's Ricky's baseball bat, the one I... Harriet, if you'd like to make a little confession, I'll listen. But if you'd rather not, I'd rather you would. <laughs> All right, dear. Just the boys and I thought it'd be nice if you could have a little fun on Halloween. You told them how much you enjoyed going to some haunted house. So we thought that if we could sort of... Ozzy, listen. I'm listening. Go on. No, listen. The bagpipes. Yeah. I hear the bagpipes again. So do I. Hey, Pop, can we have a dime? Boys, listen, listen. You hear bagpipes playing? Sure, that's what we own the dime for. He's out front now. Who's out front? Mr. Campbell, the man with the scotch flat ice cream truck. The scotch flat ice cream truck? Well, sure. Haven't you ever seen him? Can we have a dime, Pop? A dime? Here, here's 50 cents. Stuff yourselves. Thanks, Pop. Oh, boy. Hurry up, How about that? The, the, the bagpipes we heard at the McAdams place were from the scotch plant ice cream truck. What a coincidence. <laughs> oh, remarkable. You see, the, the scotch plant ice cream truck happened to, to stop there. See, there are no other houses around, and nobody lives there, but he happened to stop there. Played a different tune up there, too, didn't he? I don't remember. Harriet, believe me, it was only the scotch plaid ice cream truck. Yes, I know, dear. I'll say it just once more. The bagpipes we heard at the McAdams place were from the scotch plaid ice cream truck. Okay, dear, you convinced me. I wish I could convince myself. I'd like to get some sleep tonight. <laughs> in just a moment. Well, I don't know how you feel about it, but I kind of hope the bagpipe music didn't come from the scotch plaid ice cream truck. Because that's the way Halloween ought to be. Lots of mysterious tapping at every window. Witches riding through the air. Spirits in every tree. I've already had a message from the Halloween spirits, Mr. Smith. 
Last night on my way down Rogers Road, a voice spoke to me suddenly out of nowhere. Honest? What did it say? Beware. If you don't give us a special treat on Halloween, we'll spirit your new set of 1847 Rogers Brothers away from you. Beware. Hey, now, there's a smart ghost if there ever was one. <laughs> you mean I have a smart son if there ever was one. He hasn't heard me raving about my new 1847 Rogers Brothers for nothing. Oh, nobody raves about 1847 Rogers Brothers for nothing. There are all kinds of good reasons for getting excited about it. 1847 is the finest silver plate in America, you know. No other silver plate in the world can match its beautiful features. Features like the exceptional height and depth of the pattern ornament and the extra luster, perfect weight and balance of each piece. Those are the features that make 1847 Rogers Brothers really more like solid silver. And don't forget the price of 1847 Rogers Brothers, Mr. Smith. Oh, impossible to forget that because it's so unusual. 1847 prices haven't gone up since 1945. Not a single penny. So, no matter how you look at it, 1847 Rogers Brothers is the silverware you want for your home. It's the best, the finest silver plate in America. Famous 1847 Rogers Brothers. <laughs> oh, come on, dear. Put out the light. Let's go to sleep. Uh, in a few minutes, Harriet, I just want to finish this article. Debunking the spook. Debunking the spook? Yeah, the man who wrote it spent the night in a house that was supposed to be haunted. As I sat there in the darkness, I could hear the clock in the village striking twelve. Now is the witching hour. If ever the dead lived... Now was the time they must rise from the grave. I stood up and dared the ghost to appear. I said, if you were a ghost, I dare you to strike me dead. <laughs> a silly article. What happened next? Well, and let's see, he goes on to... Yes? The article ends right there. Oh, come on, dear, I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. You know what might be fun? Let's sleep with the lights on tonight. <laughs> week to another adventure of Ozzie and Harriet, starring Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And remember, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. Yes, Harriet, America's finest silver plate is 1847 Rogers Brothers. Appearing in support of Ozzie and Harriet were John Brown, Janet Waldo, Henry Blair, Tommy Bernard, and Jack Kirkwood. Original music was composed and conducted by Billy May. This program originates in the Hollywood studios of the National Broadcasting Company and is also broadcast over the Trans-Canada Network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This adventure of Ozzie and Harriet will be transmitted to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. The candles are coming. No, Lord McTavish. Ozzie. It's a ghost. Ozzie, wake oh. up. What's all the racket, Mom? Daddy's having a nightmare. Is that what he's doing? I don't know. He's really scared of us. Well, it frightened me, too. Okay, now we're even. <laughs> For the next adventure of Ozzy and Harriet, starring Ozzy Nelson and Harriet Hidger, this is Burns Smith speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.